Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the video and uh, kind of getting ready to learn some stuff about golf. I'm joined here with Neil Hausch today. He's going to go over some stuff uh, that will be a benefit to you for you and your uh, golf. Um, go ahead and turn it over to Neil Hausch now and he's going to introduce himself and tell everyone what he's about. Go ahead, Neil. Good. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks. And so, yeah, uh, I own a business called Golf Fitness Plus. I help golfers of all ages basically just help understand how their body really affects their golf swing and how they can improve physically. And uh, I started my business back in 2009. I just was in grad school and I thought, man, there's got to be some connection between this whole sports science and exercise science and, and helping golfers. And so I really just kind of formed this business plan and what that would look like. And here we are 10 years, uh, yeah, really 11 years later, basically, of just helping golfers of all ages really just understand anything that they're looking for to improve physically that's going to help them play better. And, and I'm very fortunate to work with several of the great PGA professionals in our section and, and work with their players and, and help them really improve whatever they're looking for, uh, like what everybody wants to do, right? We want to hit the ball farther or get lower scores. And so that's what the, my business is all about. Cool. Um, is there anything specific that you uh, really work on when you see someone initially at your uh, facility? Sure. That's that's a great question. And, and when some people walk in, you look into my facility, there's a hitting bay. Like you see that golf side of it. And then, and then you look around and it looks like a huge fitness gym. Uh, we got all kinds of uh, strength training equipment, uh, bands, uh, weightlifting equipment. And, and people kind of will go, well, I know what that golf part is. And I kind of get that this fitness part is. But how do you combine those two? Like, how do it help me tie those two together? And we really start with a screening to see how you swing. And, and, and then we look at different things like how much shoulder mobility you have or how much hip mobility or how much flexibility you have. And, and we don't ask anybody to like, well, how much can you lift or, or do you like to work out? Uh, because it's just a toolbox. That's all it is. This is just a toolbox. And, and so many you know, teaching professionals and instructors have drills and, and different training aids that's what the gym is it's, it's a bunch of training aids based on what the player needs so we are able to watch them swing and then we go through this physical evaluation and it's really slick how we can tie the two together and some people can say well you know i don't know why my back hurts or it only hurts when i i, I at the end of the round or well and we watch them swing and you watch them how they might, they might be limited in certain movements and you, you say hey if you know do you see how these two match up what, what's going on uh, so it's not just oh I, I need to get better and, and hit the ball farther there's people out there that i've been in a lot of pain and i don't know why and particularly there are juniors out there i'm sure a lot of the people listening a lot of the uh young uh you know golfers out there listen they've played with somebody who's had an injury or have had uh hip or back issues or shoulder or pain at, during a round or after a round. So um, we're all uh, susceptible to, to injury too. So that's a real big deal about it. some people um, need that evaluated as well. Yeah. yeah. It seems like there's been a real big push in the past, uh, I don't, however many years, um, just really focusing on that fitness part and really preventing the injuries. Um, I know there's stuff like the American developmental model that really helps kids, uh, not be so specific towards something you know and um it's definitely yeah. something i think is very beneficial for junior golfers nowadays to be able to get prepared in a more safe way compared to what it was just playing one sport and you're done in, in the past yeah and you make reference to somebody like tiger woods because obviously he's um i mean really the the face of the last two generations of, of just the epitome of physicality and success in golf and we've seen the videos of him swinging when he was like two years old and and it, you know it kind of gets into our brain that well I'm behind because I wasn't playing when I was two you're okay you were playing with rattles and you were learning to like walk like that's okay <laughs> um, and there's there's all kinds of science and, and research out there and that too but that what I would really love for every young person that's playing golf right now know is that if you play baseball and you're playing basketball and you like golf like that's good like you're lo learning skills in other sports that's why recess is important that's why riding bikes is important you're actually building a physical 
really skill set, uh, or, or if you will, like um, you're building your resume, you're building things that you need so that when somebody hands you that golf club or, or you really need it, you go, wow, I was skipping and I was jumping and I was shooting basketballs. And I was doing all these other movements that all really kind of tie in to what you need to hit a golf ball really well. So um, nobody is really behind and, and you, you've seen it too, Brad. Like certain kids or certain 11 year olds, they do some things really well more than other ones. But if you take that same, another 11 year old and, and you, you put a soccer ball in front of him, he is way better skilled at kicking than this one is. So everybody's just kind of slowly moving their way up this sort of skill mountain as we get older. And, and it's, it's what you're trying to uh, let people know that other sports and other other things you're doing that's good that's that is absolutely going to be good for your for your golf game but if you just only hone in on one thing and one thing only i mean there is success that way but you you, you might miss out on other really key important um really just like skills that you, you need for golf too yeah um i think that's really cool that uh, there's been a lot of research about that, and that's really coming up to tell these kids, like, hey, just don't spend all that time at the driving range. Um, and speaking of driving range, I was wondering if you had any tips or anything like that to prevent kids from spending three, four, five hours at a driving range a day and getting away from that and really enjoying their lives but still improving their game in the process. Because I know in the past you hear Tiger Woods always spends eight hours a day at the driving range and then goes plays 18 holes and stuff like that. But, I mean, is there anything that you could give to a kid that will help them improve their uh, flexibility, their strength, and their um, muscle memory with their in the process? Sure. Um, we'll, we'll start with uh, Tiger or, or Ricky or Rory. Um, these guys do this for a living. So... I do my job for a living, Brad. You do your job for a living. You spend eight hours, nine hours. Some people, you know, I mean, if we have parents, uh, kids have parents that uh, travel. I mean, we spend over 40 to 50 hours a week working. So these guys, that's what they do. Their body, their golf, that's their business. So you would expect them to play seven, eight hours a day practice. That's what they do. That's their job uh, so that they can be prepared to compete on the weekends. Kids. Your job is to hang out with friends when you can, <laughs> um, you know, uh, get together and, and, and go uh, play at the pool and, and hang out and, and do things that, that kids are allowed want to do. It is great that you want to get better uh, and you want to improve and you practice. If you really enjoy it, then I mean, obviously practice, but we clock out at the end of the day, we go home and, and you know, for kids, uh, and juniors out there to, to get with your, your teaching pro or your instructor and, and map out a plan on the range, how to practice, how much you need to practice, that it's okay to hit a medium bucket of balls and go spend 30, 40 minutes practicing putting and go home. Like that's good practice that sometimes you just get so like burned out or you think, boy, one more ball, one more ball. And we're all guilty of it. We think, boy, if I just stay up a little longer, if I get up a little earlier before long, you really start to chip away at things that matter. And before you know it, your friends are like, all you do is golf and your parents are on you because your, your grades are suffering, you know? So we really, it's a balancing act. So I would encourage kids out there of any kind, any junior, it doesn't matter your age, that, that you, you, you hone in on the practice you should be doing uh, and make it beneficial in the, in the time you need that you, you don't want to waste your time just hitting balls, hoping that you'll learn something out there. But if you're going to be out there and do that, there's some real simple, um, quick warm up drills. I know it's not fun to be on. Like I got to go 10 minutes and warm up and I got to stretch. No, like you want to get your body ready to golf. And really the two things I tell anybody, if you want, you want, you want mobility. You want to be able to be moving well and you need heat that muscles contract and move better when they're warm. Uh, that's why when you shiver, your body's like trying to create heat when you're cold. So when you can create some just heat and the joints feel like there's good blood flow, so we get blood into the muscles, the muscles uh, can perform better, that's what you're looking for. So um, I got a couple easy tips and really quick warm-up things you can do to get a little blood flow and get a little heat going so you can hit the ball a lot easier.
Hey, so let's try this. Here's a great challenge you can do at home. I'd like to take like something really light, like a soccer ball. Maybe you want to get like a basketball or something really light like that. You could challenge your brothers and the sisters. You could challenge your friends if, you, if they're around in the neighborhood and you're not too close, obviously. But if you get a soccer ball or you get something really light, like a basketball or even a beach ball maybe, and what I want you to do is you get your feet a little wide apart, get this ball, and I want you to jump and throw it as high as you can in, in the air. Or what you can do is you can say, hey, let's see who can throw it the farthest. And you kind of just throw it as far as you can. Find something light and get that ball as high as you can or get it as far as you can. Let's see how well you guys can do that at home. That creates really good speed and energy. It's going to make you hit the golf ball farther too. Try it. All right, so here's one more really simple easy drill you can do to get ready to go play golf okay we got big muscles we got our legs we got our our chest we got our shoulders we got big muscles that need to be able to play and, and perform their best when you're on the golf course so you don't have to be the person on the driving range doing all these exercises i know that can be kind of weird but what do we do we turn a lot we're gonna go play golf and we rotate so Easily enough, same thing. You could just be talking to somebody, kind of get out in front, turn and push off. Just rotate into that leg, turn and push off, turn and push off. You could just be getting your legs warmed up and your upper body warmed up. Legs, upper body, legs, push off, back and forth. Get warmed up that way. Easy drill.